Greetings, everyone. My name is Jonathan Bailey. I am from the website Plagiarism Today, which can be found at PlagiarismToday.com. And today, I want to start things off with a bit of a mea culpa. You see, in my previous video, I'll do a card up there, I said something wrong. And that wrong thing I said was that I didn't see how you could revoke one of the, an open license, such as what many video game developers give others to make their Let's Play videos. I didn't see that. Um, I compared it to a Creative Commons license, which as I've studied before and I've written about, is non-revocable. Um, that was a mistake. See, Creative Commons licenses have language that specifically make it non-revocable. It's one of the reasons they work so well, to be frank. Um, but when your license looks more like this, there's no language about revocation in there, and we're going to come back to it in just a second. And, well, I was doing some reading on this topic, both for this video and just general interest, and I ran across this really, really great article on a PC Gamer, which features interviews from the lawyers at Morrison Lee. You might recognize the name of the law firm because they were the ones who originally were defending H3H3 in the case against Matt Haas. They make a very, very compelling argument as to why the default status of a license is revocable. And you know what? They're right. I'm wrong. Make the switch. You guys nailed it. Good job. Uh, so yeah, I no longer believe that that license cannot be revoked, but I'm still not 100% convinced, and I may be able to be convinced, but I'm not 100% convinced yet that the Sampo, Campo Santo DMCA notice was legitimate. And the reason for that is because there's two issues that were not discussed in that article and really aren't discussed anywhere else. The first is, once again, let's go back to the quote-unquote license Campo Santo provides. There's no mention of a revocation clause. We don't know how they would revoke the license. If you open up the YouTube Terms of Service or like the Blogspot Terms of Service or something like that, you're going to see that there is a clause about when the license is revoked, what you have to do to trigger it. Sometimes you have to close your account. Sometimes you have to delete the file, remove the post, whatever. You have to do something to trigger it. What is required in an open license like this where there's no explicit language about the revocation? What is the requirement? I don't know. I have Googled this. I have looked this up. I have been like a madman on this. I have not been able to find anything I consider really um, a solid, just rock with it explanation. I haven't hit that yet. If you know of one, let me know, because this really, let me know in the comments, because this is delving into areas of copyright law I don't deal with much, cotton license revocation, um, it deals with like estoppel and other things like that, that really are complicated areas of law that I'm not familiar with, because I'm not a lawyer. Um, I know my copyright law, but this starts getting into some of that border country, that this is bat country, if you will, we can't stop here. But anyways, I was wrong about that. But the second issue, and the second thing that's not discussed, is according to PewDiePie, and once again, according to PewDiePie, take this for what it's worth, um, when the DMC notice was filed, the video in question was already taken down. It was a private video. Now, I find that interesting because the DMCA gives hosts like YouTube two separate ways they can respond to a DMCA notice. They can either just delete or remove the work or disable access to it. Now, this is a very important distinction. Um, I do a lot of DMCAs with Blogspot because um, one of the issues that comes up a lot for my clients is spammers, usually spammers, because I think like 95% of Blogspot today is spam, um, are plagiarizing their articles and republishing them, and that sucks, and they want them down. So I go and I file a DMCA notice. What Blogspot does isn't delete the post. They simply unpublish it and let whoever it is running it go in and either edit out the infringing content or delete it themselves. And this is a big, big thing because if, for example, they were to file a, a, a counter notice or they were able to trivially edit out the infringing material, they wouldn't be able to do that if Blogspot just jumped in and deleted it. So this is an important distinction. <clears throat> With no public access to that content, the requirements of the DMCA were technically already met. There was no reason, no further removal was necessary or even really appropriate. And this raises questions both for Campo Santo and how YouTube handled it, to be frank. But we discussed the mess that is copyright on YouTube, you know, ding on that one. So, yeah, we're not going to jump down that rabbit hole again just yet because we have a conversation to have about 
are Let's Plays legal? And I don't think my answer is going to be a popular one because it's very, very inconclusive for reasons we're going to get into. Now, the usual discussion when we start this conversation about whether Let's Plays are legal is people want to jump onto the fair use train. Um, and that is not necessarily a super helpful place to start. Um, this is the Stanford University's um, page on fair use and the four factors. As you can see, there are the four factors, the purpose and character of the use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the portion taken, and the effect upon the potential market. These have been codified into law. You've probably heard them a hundred times before. And yeah, long and short, this is what fair use is. But here's the problem. All four of those factors are very fungible, if you will. They're very difficult to nail down. And what I say is a fair use, what you say is a fair use, what PewDiePie says is a fair use, what Campo Santo says is a fair use, doesn't matter. Zero importance. The only people that can determine if a use is a fair use or not is a judge and or jury. That means someone has to file a lawsuit, this matter has to go to trial, we have to get a verdict, and then ideally we have to get an appeal on that verdict, so that way we've got an appellate court ruling too. Otherwise, it's not going to carry that much weight. And that is just to get one fair use decision and that would only apply to that exact let's play video and there is a lot of variety in let's play videos on YouTube just just pop around a little bit you have the full playthroughs like what PewDiePie did um, Glove and Boots Gaming is one of my new favorite channels they have these little five minute condensed let's plays that are absolutely hilarious um, they range in style some offer a great deal of commentary some offer almost no commentary um, yeah, uh, it's it's really incredible, the breadth of Let's Plays. And so if we get a ruling on one Let's Play or one style of Let's Play, it may not be helpful at all when looking at others. So now we're going to need lots of rulings, of, ideally from appellate courts, and you, you're getting the idea. It's a giant mess. No one really knows the answer, whether Let's Play in general is a fair use, because like I said, there's too much breadth to that, or even or whether a specific let's play is a fair use we can make guesses we can determine how likely it is but it's not super helpful now what is super helpful though is that for most of us it's a kind of a moot point you see developers have been very very generous um, and I say generous somewhat loosely because it's actually to their benefit and allowing permission for let's plays this is I'm gonna put this up here this is the Wikia page, uh, the Let's Play list by on Wikia.com, which lists developers and says which ones are cool with Let's Plays. And just look, it's, it's this third column here, no, fourth column, sorry, fourth column here, um, under permission. And you see all of these yeses. There's some maybes, and you'll we'll scroll. You'll probably see a couple of noes. And maybe we'll hit Nintendo. Um, but yeah, you see that most developers are really cool with it, and. Every single one is links to a source which they have made this statement. They have said it somewhere publicly and provided that license. And so, yes, if like Focus Home Interactive, I don't know what they made, but we landed on them. Um, you want to do a Let's Play one of their games. They've given permission. Here's where you go. And I want to put a link to this. Well, again, I'm going to put a link to all of these um, sites in the description. <clears throat> but, yeah, basically... Developers are very, very happy to have you do it, and as long as you have permission, the fair use issue doesn't really enter into it. But then we come back to the mea culpa earlier, don't we? You see, when I started this video and started the research for it, my plan was just to say, look, stop arguing fair use. You've got permission for most developers. What do you need fair use? What do you need to worry about fair use for? But yeah, most of the time, those licenses, they look like this. Just a brief blurb saying, yeah, we're happy to have you do it, without any real details, without any real meat to it. And as we're seeing, there's a lot of complexity in copyright that it turns out you can't cover in a two-sentence license. That one sentence of which, well, three sentence, sorry, one sentence of which is actually telling you to please let us know on Twitter so we can show up in your chat. It's not super helpful. See, what needs to happen right now, if we're going to really codify Let's Play as a serious art, is we're going to have to have developers not just simply say they're cool with it, but actually provide a real license for it. Real terms, including details about revocation, details about com commercialization, etc. We're going to need details. 
think like what Creative Commons has done, and I keep going back to it because it's what I'm most familiar with, but Creative Commons licenses come in those three phases. They have the little icon, then they have the human readable version, and then they have the big, long, giant legal version. Well, we need that big, giant legal version, not just the little icon version, because that stuff's important. It goes into a lot of detail that could have headed off stuff like Campo Santo. For example, if Campo Santo had said, yes, you're free to do it, but there's a morality clause, well, then we would have known where PewDiePie stood. Everything would have been very clear from the outset, and there wouldn't have been this big, giant fight. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a mess right now is where we sit. And as long as we have this understanding that developers can revoke their license at any time for any reason, all of these yeses you're seeing right here are fairly meaningless, to be frank. Oh, there's Nintendo. There's the no. Told you we'd get there eventually. Um, all in all, yeah, I don't have a good solid answer because as long as these licenses can be trivially revoked and as long as fair use and getting real rulings on this is pretty much a daydream, yeah, we're not on solid footing anywhere with Let's Plays. So yeah, my encouragement to developers, get out there and have some real licenses. Maybe someone like at Creative Commons could take this up and draft a license that de developers can adopt to allow Let's Play videos. This is the type of thing Creative Commons has done very well over the years. So that's what needs to happen next. Frankly, we need some security and we're not going to get that without real copyright licenses or a crap ton of litigation, which nobody really wants. Well, on that note, everyone, thank you very much for spending the past 10 minutes with me. Until next time, this is Jonathan Bailey, signing off.